Anyone would like to say something, comments, chastisement? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for the uh, class. It was very hard hitting. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> and my question is actually in relation to that. Um, like you said, Sometimes Prabhupada's words are very hard hitting. And, um, and when we are talking to people in the daily life in the modern world, uh, um, sometimes I feel that the best approach is not to use these hard hitting words or um, strong statements. <clears throat> um, but then I also feel that you do lose some of the essence or not the essence but you lose some of the the, the power behind uh, the messages um, and so I just wanted to ask how, how, how you how you go about this how you um, navigate these situations okay. well, thank you Prabhu very practical question we are like a, a preaching movement so preaching means communication to survive we have to communicate the message of Krishna to others and success means that the communication meets with an open ear and people are willing to take so then there's one setting this Shrimad Bhagavatam class, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya. The Bhagavatam class is generally for the devotees. And here at the Bhagavatam class, we are really on the as it is platform. Our affection for one another is that we have to allow the message to push us along. We're here to dust off any cobwebs in our consciousness because we've been in the world where Everyone and everything is okay. You know, it's all, everyone is just PC and nice. Here we want to remember the reality because Bharata means it distinguishes reality from illusion. Of course, it's not that it should just be bricks and bricks one way. The devotees <laughs> themselves also, we, we want some sweetness. But we are fortunate today that the verse itself, even if we wanted to tell you past times with each other, the verse is just like, there's the subject matter. But in relation to outreach, our thrust is to create a favorable mood in someone. So the advice was given to Dhruva by Swambhuva Manu. Dhruva, his brother, was killed by all the yakshas and then he got on this mission to rid the universe of all snakes, of all yakshas, you know. So then he was advised that the Supreme Lord is pleased when we meet others with tolerance, friendship, equality, and compassion. So when we meet others, they should feel that we regard them with friendship and equality then we should be able to tolerate whatever conceptions of life that they've imbibed. And then we should be compassionate to see how, with where they are in life, how do we show them that what we are offering or sharing is going to help them realize their own goals. You know, they want to be happy, they want to be satisfied, they want to be more productive, they want family life to, to, to blossom. So we are just trying to connect our message with their own desires, that this is actually going to assist you in what you want. And so we communicate in such a way that we also want them to discover this. Because when we come and we are drilling them, then people feel like, we are so all proud, we don't want to feel like this man convinced me. He converted me, you know these words. <laughs> So somehow we want them to discover these things by, hey, this is something nice I read in this book. I think you may like it. Yeah, yeah. You know, but you give a little something for it, you know, some reciprocity. 
tell me what you found in the book later, you keep some contact. And at the same time, the preacher is supposed to see four categories of people. The envious, the innocent, he should deal with devotees with equality and also show love to God. So we should then see, has this individual come up to some level of trust and friendship where now I can push, but I won't break them. And why we also bring in traveling preachers or whatever, is that the traveling preacher, he doesn't know everyone's situation so much. So he's not so invested that tomorrow he has to be with you the next day. So he can speak. <laughs> openly. <laughs> so the preacher on the ground here will bring those people who he knows now can take some more to someone who's low neutral, who's not going to be babying them. So it's a whole sort of teamwork thing. We have to assess the, the person and always see how to move them just a step forward. So we don't keep them on the bridge. You know, this bridge preaching sometimes Nobody crosses the bridge. They just stay on the bridge. So we have to see that the bridge actually takes them across and then they, they'll start to crawl, walk, and run back to God. So the heaviness is measured or the, strong, the strength of uh, the cutting message is tempered according to the individual you're dealing with. You have to be concerned enough to, to see you know, how, how much can they take. But yes, it's a, it's a considerate service. It's not just you want to break someone's illusion in one day. <laughs> yeah, I smashed him, Prabhu. <laughs> so, oh, no, you shouldn't just smash. Prabhupada, he said, I'm an old man. I can say things and I can get away with things. Of course, not just only that he was an old man, also he was a pure devotee. That even though he spoke sometimes strong things, people could feel that <clears throat> it was not from any envy. It was actually love. Yeah, for us, we first have to really make the person understand we care. Then they are, they'll, they'll take it. But otherwise, no one's false ego can take just some other man who you to tell me this. Yeah. But thank you for that question, yeah. Yes, Paul. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, Guruji. Thank you for the hard-hitting lecture. So uh, my question is that, uh, like in lecture, you discuss how we we get indulged into material activities and just focus and get a degree and then apply for a job. So on a practical level, when we want to apply the teachings of Bhagavatam, there is a very thin line between getting frustrated that I'm not able to do, I, I'm not able to like understand the philosophy and simultaneously work in the, like, uh, work in our job, uh, like, uh, in daily activities because we have to take care of our family and things like that. And so, like, how to <laughs> really have a balance and not get frustrated that. We are still doing those things while mm. knowing and hearing about the philosophy. Mm. So, yes. Sometimes there is, uh, it, it, is a, it becomes a very thin line to get frustrated also. And mm. Yes, yeah, thank you for the question. Yes, uh, the devotee can also become depressed, have an inferiority complex and start, you know, I'm not good enough, uh, I'm not following Bhagavatam accordingly. It shouldn't be the case in that the Bhagavatam is giving us the ideal understanding. So ours is a tension between the ideal and, as you're saying, the practical. What's my reality now? So our current reality is that there's still a lot of anathas 
unwanted desires that we may have. And we are working, also being pushed by these desires. We still have, we still value the ideas and markers of success that the world has put in front of us. Because you're in society and people can't really see your spiritual attachment. They cannot see how many rounds that you're charging focused and actually pat you on the back. But they'll see that you've got a bigger flat now, you've got a new car, uh, all those things. So because spiritual life, especially Krishna consciousness, is always advancement. There's no loss, there's no diminution on this path. We're always gaining. So we should be encouraged by that. All my contact, even when I'm hearing this hard hitting, it's purifying me. It's just that at that moment, we find ourselves a bit embarrassed that we are not at the ideal. And so now we feel like, oh, if only I was just pure devotee now, then I wouldn't be counted in dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. <laughs> but we should own dogs, camels, asses. Own this this is this is what we are. This is how we are influenced. That's why we're in the material world. So when we're being reminded, we're not feeling like we're being accused now or we're being categorized separately. No, even the speaker, dog, camel, ass. Only the pure Vaishnav here who we are just repeating their message is not in that category. So the more the devotee is making advancement, the more he actually <laughs> accepts uh, Krishna, that's Kaviraj Goswami, you know, he says, I'm more fallen than the one. Yes. And not just, <laughs> I am the stool. <laughs> no, I'm actually the stool in the worm in the stool. <laughs> There could just be words, but these pure devotees, they feel, and, and the greater proximity they are to God, the more insignificant they feel, because they can understand actually who Krishna is and how great he is, and they can properly estimate themselves. So we should actually welcome this truth that analyzes and shows us our lack and, and we should feel fortunate that we get to be reminded, hey, I have this mentality. And, and so that is joyful because I'm solving it at every step in bhakti. So we're optimistic. We're doing the right thing. We're following the process. So we shouldn't be depressed or feel too anxious, but not too relaxed to just hear it and think, well, I mean, I'm, there's everybody. I'm not alone. <laughs> no, we should, we should be challenged and encouraged to, to apply ourselves, yes, and, and continue. But yes, you are right, it can lead to that. You know, because we have that all or nothing thing. We're playing the game, because you're losing, then you you get angry, you take the ball and you want to stop the whole game. You know, kids do that. I'm no longer playing. He takes the ball and goes. <laughs> no, play the next point. You may just score, you know, continue. Yeah. yeah. I, personally, I, I felt when I came to Krishna consciousness, I was so happy about this Srimad Bhagavatam. I'd never had so much truth, just, just every day, bang. It's just like, wow. Like, how, how do they know this is me? You know? <laughs> it's like, how can this book just exactly what's going on? Yeah, so we, we should be like that, happy to hear the truth. Happy and, and encouraged by it. Thank you, Prabhu. Hi, Prabhu. Uh, my question is kind of extension of Ujjwal Prabhu's question. Mm. 
so the three the three is true like in in the job world like in the corporate world like there is always this rat race going on and even if you know the philosophy and you want it to be okay i'm just trying to do this as a service for for the lord for the family like everyone is devotee i'm try, trying to take care of everyone something like that keeping your consciousness but still there is this rat race going on your colleagues like for example my colleagues and the colleagues like everyone they wanted to be the winner they wanted to be the topper they wanted to like celebrate their success something like that so prabhu when we are in that kind of rat race then how should we see that and be aloof from that and and the thing is sometimes if we don't pursue or if we don't push ourselves in in that mode sometimes what happens then you are not uh, in part of any project that you have initiated you know like th- those kind of things keep happening and yeah and and i know personally some of our devotees they have lost their jobs because they were really aloof of the things they were thinking like oh this nice taking care of the things <laughs> so they were basically not in that that phase so so Prabhu, my question is yes to you that how we can be aloof and how we should act in the, those kind of situation when we see the red face is going on mm. yeah thank you so two things are going on the one side bob marley sang it in a song oh what a red race <laughs> this is a red race oh what a disgrace to see the human race in a rat race <laughs> so we should know this is a rat race and then you should know what is your mission in this rat race so you are a devotee of krishna you are representative power part so <clears throat> krishna is first class number one supreme person and we are wherever we are representing Krishna and Shila Prabhupada. You studied these things, you've paid so much money to get the degree, you begged to get the job. So do the job. Try to do the job as well as you can. But look at Arjuna's situation. He's fighting a war. And Krishna is telling him, you fight this war and think of me. So you are fighting for me on my behalf on my order. So this is what we mean when we saying that is your service. If you're really working for your spiritual life to maintain yourself and your family and spiritual life, then you go and work. You work in that spirit and you want to glow, glow. they shouldn't say these Hare Krishnas they don't work. Then there are certain jobs where it's about a certain quota that if you done so much you're good. Then the devotee he's not breaking his back trying to break records when he's not putting his job in some vulnerable position by just doing what is asked. You are mentioning in teams and then if you're not productive enough you get cut out and then you may lose perks and respectability so that's the job you're in if you don't want to be cut out of teams you don't want to lose respectability you have to put in the work but you should be inspired uh, that this glorifies guru dev this glorifies prabhupada that you're doing well you are earning your money honestly and at the standard that is necessary but within you you know this is not the this is not what leads to happiness what's leading to happiness is that my consciousness mm-hmm. i'm working hard for krishna working hard for the mission that is where your joy will be but you know oh what a rat race rat race rat race <laughs> So it it it's 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 the track is like that. 
Therefore, vairagya vidya nidya bhakti yoga. It's, the, it's knowledge of detachment, but the detachment is to the spirit of enjoying separately. The spirit of not seeing how everything is connected to Krishna and offering it to Krishna. So we're renouncing that spirit. So even the devotee seems to be attached to doing well. Some may criticize unnecessarily. Hey, you're so much into your job, you know. But minus doing that job as a service is that you're trying to cut corners to then add some sense gratification on the side. That may deviate you. So rather have your focus, you know. It's basically two divisions of the devotee's life who works. It's work and it's home life. And, and okay, so now you want to put Krishna in all of it. Whether you're at the temple, you're at work. I, I, you know what it takes. Like anything in life, it's, it's, a, it's a work in progress. You're always trying, right, for the balance. And, and Krishna is like that. He doesn't give us something you'll press a button and just <laughs> autopilot. No, no. He wants us to be awake, alert. Every time we're always trying to keep a balance to stay Krishna conscious. Yeah, so try to find. Everyone's trying to find the sweet spot. It's something you think you've got it. And then no, something pushes it off. Krishna wants us consciously striving to be Krishna conscious. It won't be easy. Otherwise, the temples have some vacancies. You can come and stay. There's prasadam. We'll give you prasadam. Yeah. Then there, yeah, you know, that's, that's all you're, you're good for some service here in the temple. And the nice, <laughs> in the temple, and devotees say this, actually Prabhupada's, as the boss, he's much more loving and sweeter and accommodating. But not many people want to work for Prabhupada. The workplace, they're like, they don't play with you. Here you can say, oh, I feel like I have stomach ache today, Prabhuji. Okay, Prabhu, and, you know, don't work too hard. You know, the, we need the body for service. Rest. <laughs> <laughs> there, if you haven't applied for leave or this, you cut hours, you know, somebody is on your case. So thank you. Dear devotees, for all your services here in Iskand Berlin, Shila Papa Diki, Gaur Bhamanandi. Hari Krishna. 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 Hari